This is part 13 of SQL Server interview questions and answers video series. In this video, we'll discuss the difference between blocking and deadlocking. This is a common SQL Server interview question. First, let's understand when blocking occurs. Blocking occurs if a transaction tries to acquire an incompatible lock on a resource that another transaction has already locked. The blocked transaction remains blocked until the blocking transaction releases the lock. The diagram here explains this scenario. We've got two transactions here, transaction one and transaction two. Both of these transactions want to update this table, table A. Transaction one starts first, so it acquires an exclusive lock on the table. And at the same time, transaction two also wants to update the same table. So transaction two is blocked from acquiring an exclusive lock on that table because transaction one has already locked it. So transaction two will remain blocked until transaction one completes. Let's look at this in action. We'll be using these two tables, table A and table B for this demo. And here is the SQL script to create those tables and populate them with test data. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. I also have two other instances of SQL Server Management Studio here. On the left, we have our first transaction, and on the right, we have our second transaction. Now, both the transactions, notice that they want to update the same record in this table, table A. First, let's execute part of our transaction one. Now, notice I have not executed commit transaction statement. So this is an open transaction. At the same time, transaction two also wants to update the same record in the same table. And look at what's going to happen when we execute this transaction this transaction notice it still says executing query because this is blocked this is waiting on transaction one and that's because transaction one has acquired a lock on that table so transaction two is blocked from acquiring its own lock now when is transaction two allowed to move forward whenever transaction one completes now look at this when I execute this commit transaction statement, look at what's going to happen to transaction two. Look at that, it also says query executed successfully. So when transaction one completed, whatever lock transaction one has acquired on that resource, it released that lock. So transaction two is allowed to acquire its own lock and then it is able to move forward. So that's blocking. Now let's look at when a deadlock occurs. Deadlock occurs when two or more transactions have a resource locked and each transaction requires a lock on the resource that another transaction has already locked. Neither of the transactions here can move forward as each one is waiting for the other to release the lock. In this case, SQL Server intervenes and ends the deadlock by canceling one of the transactions so the other transaction can move forward. The diagram here explains the scenario. We've got two transactions, transaction one and transaction two, and we got two resources, table A and table B. Now, both of these transactions want to update both the tables. So transaction one starts first, and it starts updating table A. So transaction one has already acquired an exclusive lock on table A. And at the same time, transaction two starts, and it starts updating table B first. So at the moment, transaction two has acquired an exclusive lock on table B, whereas transaction one has acquired an exclusive lock on table A. Now, transaction one wants to update table B. So it tries to acquire a lock on that, but it cannot because transaction two has already locked that table. In a similar fashion, transaction two tries to update table A uh, by acquiring a lock on that. It cannot do it because transaction one has already locked it. So we have a deadlock situation here because transaction one is waiting on transaction two to release the lock on table B. In a similar fashion, transaction two is waiting on transaction one to release the lock on this resource table A. So neither of the transactions here are going to give up. So SQL Server intervenes and ends this deadlock by canceling one of these transactions. So for example, if the SQL Server is going to cancel this transaction, that is transaction two, then whatever exclusive lock it has acquired on this table, you know, that is gone. So transaction one is allowed to acquire a lock on that resource and it can complete successfully. Whereas transaction two is failed and it's rolled back. Let's look at this in action. So again, here I have two instances of SQL Server Management Studio 
and here we have our first transaction and here our second transaction so what I'm going to do is execute part of this transaction so we're starting our transaction one we executed this first update statement it's going to update table A okay so it has acquired an exclusive lock on table A now I'm going to execute part of our transaction 2. Transaction 2 is updating table B first. So now the situation is transaction 1 has locked table A, transaction 2 has locked table B. And now transaction 1 un wants to update table B. And look at what's going to happen when I execute the second update statement. Look at that. This query is blocked because transaction 2 has already acquired a lock on table B so transaction 1 cannot acquire a lock on that same table for that same row and now look at what's going to happen when I execute this statement again this will be blocked because transaction 1 has already acquired a lock on this table and look at this SQL Server has intervened and that SQL Server made this transaction 2 you know the deadlock victim so it failed this transaction and we get this 1205 error and basically this is saying this process was deadlocked okay and this is deadlocked on you know these resources table A and table B okay so in the case of a deadlock there's no way that transactions can move forward that's the reason why SQL Server intervenes and ends the deadlock by canceling one of the transactions the transaction that SQL Server has canceled that's called as the deadlock victim so that's the difference between deadlocking and blocking. They are not the same. And here is that second deadlock example that we just discussed. Thank you for listening and have a great day.